right, I think we can start. So welcome everyone. It is so nice to have you guys join us here at lunchtime. Today we are talking about food allergies, sex, dating, and kissing. We've got four really excellent guests with us and we're going to just get right into it. So I'm going to ask all our guests to give us a little intro, a little bit about them. So wh what their allergies are, if they manage them, how they're involved with the food allergy community, and then we will get right into the juicy details. So why don't we jump off with Sloan? Hi, thank you. Um, thanks so much for putting this together, Courtney. It is a topic that's incredibly important and is not talked about nearly enough in the food allergy community. And I think generally um, under the umbrella of safe sex, under the umbrella of safe intimacy, emotional, social, and sexual intimacy. So I'm so thrilled to be here today. I'm Sloan Miller, as Courtney said. You may know me as Allergic Girl. I'm the author of both the Allergic Girl book and the Allergic Girl blog. I'm a licensed social worker here in the state of New York, and I have been working doing food allergy coaching with the with the community with kids and adults and parents and groups and nonprofits and government and healthcare uh, for the last 16 years. And uh, I also have food allergies. I'm allergic to all tree nuts and salmon. I stay away from fish and shellfish. I also have some oral allergies as well. And I have environmental allergies and asthma related to my allergies and eczema. So I have all of a topic disease, <laughs> all in one package. Uh, and that's me. So I'll jump over to Javier. Welcome. Nice to have you. Thanks again for having me. Like uh, Sloan mentioned, this is really exciting, um, really important to talk about. Um, Javier Evelyn, founder and CEO of Allergy. Um, we're a digital health startup with the twist of uh, drug delivery. We're working on a different version, a more portable version of Epi on the back of a phone case. Uh, we have some OIT solutions to make life a little bit more manageable. Um, but before getting into all of that, I personally suffer from a lot. So it's good to be with my family as it relates to the food allergy space. I'm allergic to uh, casein, the milk protein, uh, fin fish as well. So we might be related down the road, Sloan. Uh, tree nuts, including uh, pistachios and cashews. And um, lots of uh, war stories, good stories to share, and looking forward to the dialogue today. Awesome, thank you. And now we have Matt. Hi there, and um, thanks for having me on. Uh, happy to be here as one of two guys. I know Sloane mentioned earlier that it's great to have a guy's perspective on all of this. So uh, hopefully I can have some good input. Um, I have no allergies, zero. Um, so I'm quite lucky, but my wife, um, is allergic to all tree nuts, peanuts, chickpeas, lentils, um, and some uh, sprays and, and other things as well. So she's highly allergic um, and anaphylactic. So we'll stop breathing um, with that sort of thing. I am from London, if you can tell from the accent, um, just outside of London uh, in Surrey. And I am the operations manager for a company called Creative Nature, which my wife actually founded and owns. And we do top 14 free um, allergy snacks and baking mixes and things like that. And happy to be here. We're gonna round out the intros with Dr. G. Hi everyone. Yeah, so I am an allergist immunologist in New York City. I personally suffer from asthma, eczema, and seasonal allergies. I don't have any food allergies, but obviously have been treating patients with food allergies for the last, um, 15 plus years. So yeah, it's really nice to be here and talk about the super interesting topic that Courtney and I've hit on a couple of times, but um, it's always um, really important to get it out there. All right. So I think the way that we want to structure this is to roughly walk through, you know, dating and then the things that happen along it. So we want to start with maybe the beginning to when you finally become intimate. Um, in your more typical sense of like what a dating structure would look like. Um, I have personally <laughs> been with my husband for 14 years. So I started dating him at 19. So I like do not know what it's like to date with technology. So if I sound really old, that's why. <laughs> so please feel free to update me on what like, you know, young people will be um, experiencing at some point because I have no idea. So I think we're going to jump right off with this question, I'm gonna ask Sloan to help us with this. So the question is, what advice do you have about 
bringing up the topic of food allergy. How would you bring this up to a new partner? How would you bring this up to someone maybe you're interested in dating um, or just going out with or hanging out with a little bit more? Um, and can you touch about the idea of what we had talked about in the past of how you bring something to a relationship? It might be food allergy, it might be something else. So can you go over that a little bit more as well? Sure. So generally, and I, I talked about this in my book and I talked about having the talk, right? And the talk really is at some point, there will be a natural opening when you are getting to know someone to say, oh, and I have this deal. And it's an opportunity to let them get to know this aspect of you. It's not all of you, it's just one aspect of you. Um, as it pertains to you, because you know how to take care of yourself. So this is just like, hey, this is my deal. I have some food allergies. Uh, I don't, I can't eat those things. I carry emergency medication. I know how to take care of myself. Just wanted to give you a heads up. That's like a very initial, easy breezy, just letting you know I have a, a medical issue. And if you notice, like there's, that was three sentences. It's, it's very simple, clear, concise, and factual. Now, when do you bring up the talk is a it's a it's a it's a big question and for everyone, it's going to be different and for every life stage, it's going to be different um, and for personality. Some people are very shy and introverted. Some people are extroverted. The point is there are multiple points about this that um, I think it's really important to share who you are with the person that's why you're dating you are getting to know them they are getting to know you and like i said this is one aspect of you i also think it's important to let them know this is something that's going on with you again does it need to come up in the first date no it doesn't unless you're allergic to peanuts and there are, this person suggests that they want to take you to a peanut processing factory because oh isn't that so cool in which case you'd have to say you know i would love to hang out with you I'm actually allergic to peanuts. I carry emergency medication. Um, I can't eat them. However, let's, what about this other thing? You notice I just pivoted, right? So you didn't say, I don't want to go on a date. You didn't say, Ugh, I can't date this person because they suggested peanuts. <laughs> what you do is you say, these are my needs. These are my medical needs. I totally want to hang out with you. Let's do this other thing that's safe for me. And it gives a person, and I'd love to hear from Javier and, and Matthew about what they think about this um, approach, but I really feel like it gives the other person an opportunity to be like, oh, is there anything more I need to do or I need to know? Or they don't need to ask anything because here's the thing about the talk. You know how to take care of you. And this is not about you asking another person to take care of you. This is about you saying, hey, I have a medical need. Like, look, here's my, here's my um, medical alert bracelet. This is also a really good conversation starter. Like, hey, I have a medical need. Just letting you know. Um, caveat, if you are unclear on how to take care of your needs, if you are unclear about your anaphylaxis action plan or what signs and symptoms of anaphylaxis are, or you don't have a prescription or you don't have an allergist, great time to get one. You should have all those things and you should feel really knowledgeable and secure in your ability to take care of yourself because that's not what you're asking another person to do you're letting them know this aspect of you how's that <laughs> did i cover your question <laughs> no, i think that's a really nice thing is to hear it's like saying i know how to take care of myself you know i'm not asking you to take care of me this is just part of me and i think that that's really a really cool mind shift because i think a lot of the times we we forget that we're like, oh yeah, no, I'm good. I got this, you know, yeah. don't worry about me. Yeah. Uh, and I think that might kind of actually lend into the next question, which I would like to know from Matt, you know, as someone with food allergies, how did it, how did it go down for you? When did you learn about Julianne's food allergies? How did that make you feel? Um, and just how did she, she approach that with you? Um, firstly, can you hear me better now? Is that all right? Perfect. Um, so, uh, I knew Julianne before we started dating. We were good friends um, and I had no idea about any of her allergies because she would always keep that quite private, quite to herself. Um, and then we went on a first date 
and I left it up to Julianne to sort of decide where we went. I think that's important as well. You, like Sloan said, you if you have the allergies, you kind of sway where the date's going. So you decide where you're going because you know different places that are safe for you. Um, so even by the end of our first date, I didn't know any of her allergies um, because she was quite private about it and, you know, maybe didn't want to scare me off, which I think, you know, you shouldn't be scared about having allergies. It's a natural thing. Lots of people have them. So don't worry about it. Um, and then it got to the end of the date and I obviously went in for a, a cheeky kiss and she pulled back because, you know, I think it's a scary a scary thing on a first date when even if you're friends with someone, if you haven't had that talk about allergies, um, you know, you don't want to go kissing around and, and get worried about what's what they've eaten or what they've drunk or anything like that. So, um, yeah, I I found out about her allergies a little bit into our relationship. Um, and for me, I was a sort of a, a cup of peanuts a day kind of guy every in, when I came home from um, school when I was a kid, I'd go for a cup of peanuts instead of a, a chocolate snack or a pack of crisps. Um, so it was slightly daunting for me to think, right, I've got to give this up. Um, but, you know, when you find the right person, you're quite happy to. So it's actually really easy to do. Um, and I found that I don't miss peanuts that much. So, yeah, hopefully that answered the question. I think so. I think that just like made everyone kind of love you a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> she found a good one in you. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, so talking about kissing, I mean, two part question for you, Javier. First, have you ever considered um, not asking someone out or shying away from it because of your food allergies? Did those ever, did that ever present a barrier for you? And then the second question would be, how about kissing? How do you go about that if you make the first kiss? You know, because Matt talked about how he went in for the kiss, but have you ever had the experience where you, you want to go in for the kiss and then you realize, ooh, actually, I'm not sure if I can do. Yeah, for sure. Um, I agree with everything that's been said so far. And I wish I, I met Sloan years ago. I might have had a definitely a different approach to kind of kick off different potential relationships. So like yourself, Courtney, I've been married going on 14 years this, this year. So I'm going to put on my time machine and have to think about, you know, this the ISU Illinois State days, right? And just, um, I was somebody that walked with no uh, regard for human life, meaning that I would just kind of put myself in scenarios where I would kind of figure out and apply, right? Um, so I, I can go back to times where I've had dates where even though I knew I kind of had this little itchy feeling every time I had um, taken a protein shake as an example, I downed one of those before a date night one day and it led to me fast forward being handed oatmeal so I can you know rub that on my body right to kind of reduce all types of the rashes that were starting to come up and obviously my anaphylact or my pen was ready and handy for the most part um, so I was one of those young men that just was first time away from school um, mom and dad are not there uh, so I just kind of just kind of went on the fly um, so that happens a lot I'm not saying that's in, in ladies young ladies and young gentlemen I hope that you don't follow that you want to follow what's been said prior to this part of the conversation um, you know, I would say in terms of approaching first kisses, I always, I would say to, to, to Matthew's point, I always like to try to control where we get food from. So there's certain parts of, you know, we're in a dorm at this point, right? So whether it's a dorm or if you're uh, ordering uh, pizza, right? And then whenever they said pizza night, I would get kind of cringe a little bit, but luckily, you know, those are where the, the hot wings and the, and the fries, the big oversized potatoes kind of come into play, right? So for me, I didn't really have an approach other than trying to control at minimum because I didn't say anything. I was definitely shy towards bringing that up. I was somebody that, especially at a younger age, 18, 19, 20, you know, uh, thinking that that could be getting in the way of something that could turn out pretty special, right? We're in college, you're trying to find that person potentially in addition to getting your degree, most importantly, right? Uh, so really, it was kind of like figure it out on the fly. I was one of those young uh, guys growing up. And really, the only thing I would say is that I tried to make sure that I was cognizant of making sure that if I saw the wing count go from eight to seven to six and hey, those are, those are for me, can I, let's make sure we kind of slow down on those wings. That's how I'm gonna eat and survive the rest of the night. Uh, so yeah, from my perspective, moving forward now, I would say fast forward to the, the wife at this point. She's one, when I met her in college as well too, uh, the only gotcha we had was when she first, um, I think made dinner for us, it was a date night. 
Um, she uh, it was she was very cognizant about you know making spaghetti. Hey, you, you said you can't eat cheese. I said yeah, I can't eat cheese. So I'm thinking like, oh my god, I think I found the one. I've had that, I've never had that question before. This is great. Um, unfortunately, the breadsticks that she bought had like little small specks of Parmesan cheese, and nothing bad happened. It wasn't like a very bad uh, uh, I would say uh, event of anaphylactic shock. But she kind of saw it on her face, and I can see the real true concern, as opposed to some other stories I'll tell you down the road where they probably were hoping that I continue to feel that way for the most part. So um, uh, to everyone's point, to Matthew's point, you know, when you when you have somebody that has that empathy, right, towards that condition, that's when you know you got to keep her, and um, you should definitely follow Sloan's rules first and foremost around making sure uh, you have those questions, have that conversation. I think you shouldn't be shy. And I think now there are way more tools and lots of more ways to communicate that to make sure that it's gonna be a smooth night moving forward. Courtney, may I ask a, a follow-up? Yeah, go for it. So, you know, again, when I mentioned before about like having the talk and that it's different in different life stages, like I wasn't having this at 15 with a dude I wanted to kiss and I'm a straight woman. So I'm talking about men and women, but same would hold. Um, I, I wasn't. However, having said that, when I was 15, nuts weren't everywhere. Um, there weren't salmon skin, uh, which there are now. There weren't salmon skin <laughs> crisps that people could snack on. And people weren't like walking around having like cashew nut milk. It didn't exist. So the conversation, like we were kids having pizza to Javier's point, I'm not allergic to milk. So that was totally safe. So I could I didn't need to have the conversation. It didn't really, like our, our national diet here in America also really changed and our allergens are now in more places, um, which, is, which is one interesting thing. But just to say that I was, I, it was interesting to me that um, both Matthew's partner and Javier as, as the person with the allergy didn't say anything. Um, and I too, I am sure that was my MO as well, because we do feel like, and I'm going to speak for myself, but we feel like it's a burden and we do feel like it's either shameful or embarrassing, or it makes us less than, or, you know, we have, we have like a kryptonite, a very clear kryptonite that can do real harm. And so it is, it takes a lot of um, emotional maturity to share that of yourself, which isn't necessarily going to happen freshman year of college. <laughs> it's just not, you know, and it's not necessarily going to happen on a first date because you don't know who this person is. And I'm sure I totally understand your wife being like, I may want to kiss you, but I don't know what you ate today aside from this meal. Right. So um, just to I, I just wanted to say that that like that's also appropriate and it's OK to take time and uh, and do and ex expose that part of yourself in your own timeline and that you shouldn't feel rushed um, and it's okay to practice with friends practice the conversation that you want to have with someone about like i'd like to get my kiss on i don't know what you ate today here's the research and and this is what dr gupta and i were talking about like i use there's one piece of research that's about peanut allergens and saliva from 2006. I have used that piece of research to say to potential partners, totally want to kiss you. I don't know what you ate before you saw me. And, uh, <laughs> and here's a piece of research that says we need to wait four hours and you need to eat something that doesn't have my allergens in it in order to get rid of the allergens in your saliva. And again, coming from a straight perspective, men are like, okay, that's what I need to do. I'll do it. And it's, it gives them something very clear to do. Um, uh, Javier and Matthew, if I might just ask, like follow up, like what do you think about that? Like, how, would that have helped you? Would not that knowledge, or what do you think about receiving that? Kind of, if someone had said that to you. Um, from my, uh, no, go. so so many, so many gentlemen on this call. I'll jump in. I'll jump in. <laughs> um, um, so I would say like I agree one hundred percent. If there's a way to kind of just make it up front, up known. Uh, up front and saying, hey, look, you know, this is the scenario. I'm not trying to scratch the record, record scratch, you know, moment, you know, things are nice and smooth and all of a sudden that happens. Uh, but I think the earlier, the better um, getting in front of that, even back in the day to now, right? To your point, uh, Sloan, there's lots more types of, I'm plant-based these days on top of that. So I'm allergic to cashews. So I have to be careful when I go to a vegan restaurant. Uh, so when you have that conversation, also that's a great filter to kind of make sure that, you know what, is this someone that could 
know, did they check that box or can they make it to the next round? Not to kind of make life that way, um, but just to kind of visualize what I'm kind of thinking about for the most part. So I'd agree in that capacity. Uh, we'd love to kind of hear what Matthew thinks about it as well. Yeah, I think uh, even taking it further than that, um, you know, what if someone's eaten nuts, a handful of nuts, and then it's on their hand and that causes a reaction? Um, or, you know, you go to a coffee shop and the milk that they're using in your coffee has previously had cashew milk or almond milk or something in. And, you know, there's all of these different things that I had no idea about because obviously I don't have allergies, but Julianne, my wife, she has this constant fear everywhere she goes like are they doing the necessary things in place are they putting these in place so you know when when you're going on a first date and and you have no idea that any of this stuff is about it's i think it's really important that um an allergy sufferer just just thinks about that as well because the person that they're with the person that they're dating could be completely open to any suggestion so you know just by having that little chat it could be something really small it, it's so important by by shying away from it um you could end up in quite a sticky situation and uh, even even what so we've been together um just over 10 years and about five years ago i almost um killed her just in a easter egg hunt and it was completely it was my fault because i didn't read the back of the pack but you know i bought some white chocolate easter eggs i thought brilliant they haven't said any, they're white chocolate and something on the front of pack we'll just do this fun easter egg hunt around the house It'd be nice, romantic, and then suddenly she ate one, and it was uh, white chocolate and hazelnut. So yeah, I think it, it, whatever stage you are in a relationship, you're going to have these issues. But you know, as as long as you're talking to each other, communicating, it, that's that's how you get through it. That's really nice. Thank you guys for sharing that. Um, in terms of kissing, since we're kind of there, um, I would love to turn it to Dr. G and just get her her professional opinion um, about like, what if you go in for the kiss on accident or it's just like, whoa, this is really sparks are flying and you go for it. And then you just don't know what's happened. Or um, if you're trying to find a good set of rules for your partner, what can you give us some guidance of how do we set those rules? Yeah, so I mean, I really appreciate everyone's like kind of candid answers to all of these questions, but I think for me as a medical professional, especially dealing with adolescents and trying to help, um, I think everyone with food allergies kind of be more vocal. To me, um, especially on these dating apps and stuff, I almost think it should be a part of your profile, <laughs> to be honest with you. And I and I get that, you know, for some people that doesn't work. And I totally, but I think if we're talking about best practices, um, you, as Courtney mentioned, you know, you don't know when those sparks will start to fly. You don't know if it's just going to be a kiss. You don't know if it's going to be more than a kiss. You really can't predict those things. And I think when you're an adolescent, you really, really can't predict those things because you are at the stage in your life when everything is new and when you're experiencing everything new. And so for me, my advice would personally be that if, and I think, you know, Courtney's a great example of this because we've had multiple conversations about her relationship. But I think that when you're with somebody that truly cares or just with a nice person in general, no one's going to judge you for something that is uh, like something that's life threatening, something that's a medical condition, something that you can't prevent. Um, and so for me, I would say that if you really want to do like, you know, one of those, what are the first questions you should ask someone to really find out if they're the right person for you? Well, I think with food allergies, this is the exact topic that you can really find out if this is a kind of a deal breaker, or if this is somebody that's truly like a kind person that is going to be uh, there for you, you know? And so, um, so I just wanted to kind of just bring that up because I really do think it needs to be brought up really, really, um, pretty, pretty quickly. Um, not only because, you know, you could be exposed to something during the date, not only kissing or intimacy, but there could be a situation that you get involved with where you could start reacting. And if the person doesn't understand that you have a food allergy, they won't know to look for your epinephrine device to help you. Um, they won't know where to find it. They won't know, um, you know, what that kind of, uh, goes into. 
Um, and then as far as, you know, what does the research show? Um, there's not that much of it, to be honest with you. Okay. But what we do know is that kiss related reactions um, are caused by food stuck in the teeth, food in the saliva, um, and then even food left over on the mouth. Like if you're eating, like if your partner is really sloppy and has like pieces of food around their mouth, you know, things like that um, could cause a reaction. And obviously it's safer if your partner has not eaten your allergen um, that day. Um, but it, as far as the research showing, like, you know, there's one, uh, the one that Sloan mentioned that uh, regarding the peanut and they looked at the protein, the peanut protein that, um, that causes reactions. And they, they said that, you know, that one within one hour, it was kind of undetect undetectable in the saliva, but again, the timings on different, like I've, I've read different kind of, uh, opinions on this and it's like two to six hours and you know does brushing your teeth really help does rinsing your mouth out really help well obviously like again if you're a messy eater you have it all over your face you get it inside you know you have the, the kind of tooth shape where you can get it inside your teeth more easily there are you know things that will help obviously get the particles out of your mouth. Um, but you know, the, the data and the studies on whether or not those interventions like truly help for somebody that's very sensitive and very sensitized is, um, you know, that's not that particular on like, what can we tell our partner to do? Ideally, the gold standard is to really not consume a meal with, especially, you know, the, the allergen that seems to be associated with the most reactions is peanut. And then um, for, uh, and then there's also some data on um, like, if you're allergic to uh, medications like beta lactams or penicillins, then that also is implicated. So, you know, again, um, the reactions are rare, but if you know your body and you start like, you know, you're kissing someone, they know that you're sensitive. They know you both know that, hey, I've eaten something and you start feeling symptoms then that is easier to stop, to, you know, um, stop, evaluate, see what's going on, and then to use your epinephrine device if you need it or not. So I think for me, um, you know, there is no hard, fast rule um, besides just not consuming. But if you're living with someone uh, and you're married to someone, just telling them that they can never consume their allergen might be hard. And I know Courtney has uh, created like some kind of like system for her where she like really knows what her partner has eaten and, um, and can like kind of guide like how intimate she's going to be or when she's comfortable being intimate or maybe the, the allergen and how sensitive she is to that particular allergen. So I think it's, it's variable, right? So it's, it's variable on how, um, how much exposure you've needed to have a reaction, what the allergen is, all of these things. So I don't think there's any like clear cut rules that I can personally give to anyone besides just telling your partner and making them aware and helping them understand what a food allergy is and helping them understand how to treat a food allergy and symptoms of a food allergy if you are to have one. What I would actually love to know um, after going off what Dr. G said, because I think this is totally right in terms of like what I've done, but I would love to know from all three of you guys, if you have any, um, any kind of household rules, I like to say rules, but you know, just any like household practices you, with your partner um, or maybe because I think we've all are in relationships right now, what you've done in the past to make sure that you're feeling safe um, and things that like are, are doable, you know, I think there's a lot of things that sound great, but are they like actually something that is a long-term solution to make sure that both you and your partner are feeling safe and, and happy about that. So maybe do you want to jump to slow and we'll go slow and have you and Matt, you can all kind of share your little household tips and also slow talk about beards. <laughs> I was just thinking about that because I totally had an anaphylactic event from a dude who had cashew nut dust in his beard. And I had, I, we, this was like third date. He knew all about my food allergies. He knew my, where my EpiPen was. We were at my house. We shared a meal from a restaurant that was safe for me, where they know me. We had the same food. 
um, his mom is a nurse, so he was <laughs> he was very calm. But um, he had had cashews hours earlier, like 10 hours earlier in the day. He hadn't showered before he saw me, came straight to work, had a beard. We are smooching on the couch, and I, I have contact uh, allergies from beards, so it's not unusual for me to get rashy from a beard. Uh, so I thought that was what, what was happening, and so I was like, oh, I'm just going to keep kissing him. Um, but then all of a sudden, I was like, why am I wheezing? to system involvement, right? Anaphylaxis. And I and I went into the into the I went to the bathroom and I'm covered in hives and I'm wheezing and I'm like, oh, what did you eat earlier today? And he's like, I had cashews and he's he's one of these eaters and he had a beard. And so that was like that was that was new to me. Uh, it ended up being fine. We were fine. And he was very caring, very supportive, very loving, and very much like, I'm here, we'll do what you need to do. And, you know, like the the sexy part, sexy time stopped, and friend, kind person was there, which is, you know, what you're hoping for. But even if he weren't, again, I know how to take care of myself, so I would have been like, all right, I know what I need to do. But it was very nice that he was uh, completely supportive. But yeah, it was surprise beard attack. <laughs> um, in terms of um, partnership, so uh, I am nuts and fish. Those are my big allergens. Um, and so we don't have those in the house. Um, and um, uh, However, there are things that I have food intolerances to wheat, um, dairy, and soy, and we have those in the house because that's not an allergen and that's fine. And, and, you know, and we have separate pots and pans. So I will make him a grilled cheese with real bread um, on his pans. However, ultimately, everything's still washed in the dishwasher together and my allergens aren't here. I'm not allergic to wheat. It just gives me a little tummy ache sometimes. So. Um, I, I have a no allergen policy and, um, sometimes he will get a gift that has, that's like candy that's made in a facility with nuts and that, uh, I will let him eat it in the car, <laughs> like on his way to work or something like he can take it elsewhere, just not in the house. Um, and that's something we discussed over time that makes me feel the most safe. I'm the cook in the, in the family. So he's like, that's fine for him. In terms of eating allergens generally though, um, because we live together and, and it's no longer just dating, like I may see him once a week and then you don't know, you know, when you're going to see each other, we see each other all the time. If he's out with friends or out with family, I say, go for it you know, eat whatever you like. And he knows that he will just not kiss me when he comes home. And I will, I will ask him to wash his beard before he gets into bed. Um, but that's kind of it. And he's very, he's, he's very, since the beginning, he's been very communicative of like, I was out with my buddies and we ended up all having, you know, shrimp paella or something. And I'm like, okay, I just want, you know, I'll kiss you tomorrow morning, <laughs> you know, and then, and that's how we work it out. And it's, um, it's all clear communication. Um, he's very supportive. He, again, I, 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 in the beginning of our relationship, you know, more information came out as necessary, um, as we became more intimate and, and it was a, it was not a deal for him at all. And again, but I haven't asked him to give it, give his food up when he's not in the house or like in his life. And I don't think that's necessary. I'm like, do whatever you want to do. And, and even like we're out to dinner with his family, they love seafood. And um, we were at a very famous restaurant that has a, a very famous seafood platter. And they were like, let's order the seafood and, and let's order the foie gras with the nuts. <laughs> and, and he looked over at me and I was like, that's fine. I'll give you a kiss now. I'll kiss you tomorrow morning. Go crazy. Enjoy your family. Enjoy food. Food is enjoyable, and um, and there's no reason to 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 there. I don't see. I I think it's I think it's perfectly fine to be like enjoy your food. We understand what's going on. I will kiss you now and not kiss you after you've eaten that. <laughs> um, from from I love that. Um, you know, from my end, you know, my wife and I both do the cooking at times, right? And she has a, a few uh, food intolerances, so quinoa every now and then kind of gets her. Sometimes avocado without squeezing lime on there um, as well too. So 
it's really number one to your point, Sloan, just kind of having separate, we haven't even thought about separate, uh, I would say cooking, uh, I would say pans and things like that. That's next level. And I think that's actually just another level of safety in a good way, right? Because you never know what kind of transfers over for the most part. Um, so that's one thing. And then, you know, when we work from home, we have our respective offices. So with the cashew allergies, which she loves some cashews. She told, me, she told me that like midway in. And obviously I didn't know about my cashew allergy until maybe like seven, eight years into marriage. This is random, right? It was just a, a dote onset uh, allergies that kind of popped up out of nowhere, right? So she'll always let me know as an example. I love uh, different granolas and different mixed nuts as well. I can do walnuts and almonds and things like that. So we just kind of just make our own these days, right? And she'll have hers on our desk. I have mine in, in, in my desk as well. She can obviously eat out of mine if she hasn't dipped into her own uh, jar. But typically I know that's no-no land over there. There may be some other snacks I can eat low key and she's kind of hiding that from me. I'm totally joking. She doesn't hide the food like that. Um, but even like going out into public, right? So we think about, let's say like family sessions, let's say the Thanksgivings of the world, right? Um, my wife is going to make sure she calls those aunts, those uncles to remind them for the you know umpteenth time, hey, don't put cheese in this. By the way, we have a vegan version of this mac and cheese as an example. Let's just kind of save a couple slices for Javier to make sure he doesn't uh, starve during this momentous uh, meal that we're going to be having for the most part. So I think communicating not just uh, with uh, uh, the missus obviously is helpful, but as you go out and about uh, making sure that the family is aware of it, um, even be though you've grown up with these siblings and cousins at times, they kind of get into their own world. And the same scenario I've seen where that food I'm allergic to gets ordered at the, at the, at the table. I don't see it. I'm not at a point where I'm that reactive to it. Um, thankfully, I can kind of sit there. I will kind of hold off on the kissing part as well for the most part. Um, beyond that is just about communication more than anything else, making sure that you put it all up there and just indicating, hey, I brought something new. There's a new treat that we have here. Sometimes my wife ends up being like the, the, test, the tester of said new treat in the house. We love some Trader Joe's. No stock owned in that, by the way. Um, so as an example, you get something from there and then you're like, you know what? This is looks like it may be quinoa related. I'll go in there, eat it, right? You're good, Nikki. You should be fine. And obviously she probably would be as hesitant as possible. On my end, same thing, right? May contain type facility, right? Oh, you know, that looks amazing. I can use that snack. I can only eat so many of them. Um, she takes a bite, takes a couple more bites, another bite after that and say, actually, you can't eat this, by the way. It was really good too. So you can have the rest of it, right? So I think that way is, uh, is very important. And as you find that partner down the road, obviously, um, it's at a point where sometimes I don't even have to. I'm, I'm always, I've always been a self-advocate, um, but my wife is probably even more of an advocate for me when it comes to ordering food because you don't want to have to deal with that in public, right? Not because it's embarrassing, because just out of empathy, as I mentioned before. Uh, so the double click on everything Sloan mentioned as well, too, plus um, just making sure you communicate, kind of identify different dishes and sometimes putting things in different parts of the house to make sure you don't have that hunger attack in the middle of the night. You just kind of grab something. Um, I've been there, right? I've definitely done that um, new protein bar that came in and all of a sudden I feel the itchiness, right? Put it down and just kind of place it on my wife's desk. Say this is this is all you. This is all you. <laughs> um, yeah, I think. This is, uh, I get quite passionate about um, the, the allergies, I think, from, from the, the dating thing with Julianne, but also on airlines and stuff. So for me, as far as I can tell, no one is addicted to nuts. So th that's not a thing that people have to worry about is being addicted to nuts. So it's an easy thing to, to not eat. So for me, when Julianne said that I'm, I'm allergic to all tree nuts and peanuts, I was like, okay, I won't eat them then. And, and that's it, I haven't eaten them for 10 years. And I think it's, it's something that's so easy to do that why can't, why can't people just say, yeah, okay, I don't need to eat them. It's not, it's not like I have to eat nuts in order to survive. So it, it was a decision on my part, sort of, well, what do I care more about? Eating peanuts or my wife? And, and it was a no brainer. So, uh, and again, that's something on airlines, which is, is a huge thing for allergy sufferers. I know I, I actually fight the airlines more than Julianne does because I, uh, I don't want any allergies to happen. So I go on, I'm like, look, why, why do you insist on continuing to eat when there's been uh, announcements on the plane three times, four times saying, stop eating nuts. We've got an allergy sufferer on board and there's someone sitting behind going, yeah, well, I, I paid for these in the airport, so I'm going to carry on eating. Why? People can not smoke on a plane, <laughs> you know, it's not an addiction. So um, yeah, I think that's, you know, it's, it's up to you. It's up to your mentality. What, what's more important to you as a person, your relationship 
or continuing to eat this thing that you've enjoyed eating for so many years. Um, and then Javier, you touched on uh, eating out. Again, it's, I'm, I'm the one that's constantly at the waiter and at the, uh, at the staff going, right, look, bring me the menu, bring me the back of pack. I want to see everything. Does it make and take? What's your kitchen like? Have you cleaned everything down? Whereas Julianne's sort of sitting there, like, oh no, not again. <laughs> So um, yeah, we, we don't eat out <laughs> too, too much because of that, because I, I think I annoy her um, quite a lot. But yeah, uh, I, I think it's just a mentality side of thing. From my point of view, as a non-allergy sufferer, I think it's a mentality. Um, you know, there's, I, uh, I do the cooking in the house, so we eat exactly the same food. I don't have to put nuts in, chickpeas, lentils, coconut. I don't, I don't need to cook with that sort of thing. So yeah, whatever, whatever I eat, she eats, and it's based on her allergies. Um, I think everyone's looking for a Matt Ford in their lives right now. <laughs> All the single people are like, where can I get him as a clone? Um, I, I'm trying to respect our lunchtime, and I have a couple of quick fire questions that we've had from the audience that we also wanted to get through. Um, and then maybe at the end, we can come back to more of this discussion. Uh, but we really wanted to cover sex as well as kissing. And I know that like kissing kind of goes hand in hand with sex a little bit in terms of like having your rules in place. But we want to know a little bit more about the facts. So we talked about um, allergens and saliva and in the mouth. What about um, allergens in the other body fluids that are involved in sex? So we're thinking about semen. We're also about thinking about female secretion. Um, and also what happens, we've talked about kissing, what happens um, with oral sex? Is there anything that we should know about? So I'm gonna throw that to Dr. G. It's a like massively loaded question because I squeezed it all into one, but could you kind of give us a rundown on um, how allergens play a role in sex? Yeah, so, you know, there isn't enough solid evidence to say that food allergens can be present in semen or the fluid around semen um, in enough quantity to trigger a reaction. Um, however, you know, there has, you know, and so it's kind of, um, you know, on the topic of oral sex, um, so, so I'll go back, sorry, reactions to semen can happen, but it's not through a food allergy necessarily. It's more that you can, uh, somebody can be um, allergic to the seminal fluid. So you can be allergic to the fluid around the semen um, and that can cause a reaction in some people. And so if you've had an anaphylactic type reaction or um, a severe enough reaction during intercourse and it's been reported mostly in women, um, then you should get a value now, oral sex is different where, you know, again, if somebody has consumed food, the thought process is, is that it, the food may be within the oral cavity. And then the, for example, the tissue around the penis is very, um, it's like an open gland. And so it can be, you know, it can, um, it can kind of uh, be a source of a reaction if the person has consumed food. Um, and so, I think that, um, you know, that's, that's kind of where we're at as far as that goes. So again, it's the whole concept of, you know, again, what foods are you allergic to? How sensitive are you? Have you previously had any kind of symptoms or reactions with a partner? Um, and, uh, you know, what has that looked like for you? And then to set rules and boundaries with your doctor, sitting down with your doctor, talking about your symptoms, talking about your reactions, and kind of figuring out, is there, for you in particular, is there something that's going on there that you need to be worried about? Um, if you do have a reaction to semen, to the seminal fluid, so not the semen itself, but the fluid around the semen that has proteins in it, then there, you know, the protocol would be to wear a condom. And of course, you know, the condom can break, there can be issues. 
in that respect. Um, and so you do have to be very careful. There is some desensitization um, protocols that you could go and see somebody for. I myself have never done any kind of process like that in my office, but you know there are things that can be done if you have a true seminal fluid allergy. Um, but again, as far as I can tell from the research that's been done, there's just really not enough solid evidence to say that food allergens are present in semen or in the liquid, you know, or in any secretions that a woman might put out. Um, but again, you know, it's, um, and, and if there, there just haven't been that many reports of reactions and whether that's because people are embarrassed, that's because, you know, we haven't asked enough questions in the medical community, um, not sure, but that's kind of where we're at right now. So would we consider, um, and maybe I'll throw this at the audience, uh, not the audience, the panelists, if you feel comfortable answering that, but would you consider the kind of idea of, okay, so my aller my partner's eaten my allergen, and now my personal thing is I feel comfortable when my husband has eaten another meal and it's been three hours since he's eaten one of my allergens, then I'll go for a kiss and all of that. And the same thing goes with sex. Um, do you guys have like, is it the same rules as kissing for sex or is there any other rules that you have in place because of that? So I guess, Courtney, I know you and Sloan have these same kind of identical rules that you must have read on some blog or somewhere out there where maybe it's that Maloney study. I, yeah. I thought that, yeah. <laughs> it's the study. The Maloney study wasn't really that particular. They kind of just, um, but I think that at the end of the day, it, um, it's an older study. Um, and I, I think that those rules are fine. And if they're working for you, that's totally fine. Um, and, you know, I think that probably the concept between, um, you know, having a meal in between um, that doesn't contain the allergen, um, just kind of rinse, uh, uh, is enough time period, right? Where you haven't been exposed to the allergen or your partner hasn't been exposed to the allergen. But I guess both of you can repeat that rule. Again, I'm not, uh, and just kind of make sure that everyone understands exactly what your rule is just so, cause I think there's a lot of people here that have questions about that particular aspect. And I personally don't like rules. I, I think that those are, those could be guidelines, like general guidelines, but I think that everybody needs to kind of um, figure out their body and make sure that, that those rules kind of apply to them and their allergens too. And I think that discussion could happen with your doctor too, um, just based on your history and reactions and things like that. Yeah, I, that makes a lot of sense. I mean, I don't know, Sloan, do you want to quickly talk about why you have those specific rules in place? It was from the Maloney study. Yeah. And since 2006, I've seen doctors now talk about six hours. Um, I think ultimately, it, it. I mean, you're talking about three hours. <laughs> I took the average at four hours. I think ultimately, though, it's about what you're comfortable with. Again, like I'll use the example of my partner when he was eating the fish fest with his family. I'm like, I'll kiss you tomorrow morning <laughs> because, you know, because because just because that's what makes me feel safe. It doesn't mean we're not going to sleep in the same bed. Doesn't mean he's not going to use his toothbrush. He is. Um, he's going to do all that stuff. Uh, but just for my own personal feeling of safety and confidence, like. And again, because we're in a relationship and it's not dating, I'm going to see him tomorrow morning. Um, and, you know, maybe we'll have sexy time in the morning. You know, that that would mentally. And a piece of this is also emotional. Like there is some data, very scant data. And then there is a whole emotional piece. How do you feel emotionally? How do you do you does this make sense to you? Or are you just like, actually, I'm going to stay away from you for a few hours and then, but I will come back and, and we'll have time. So I think that's, that's where that negotiation piece needs to come in. And the same with like having allergens in the home. I, with the thousands of families that I work with, every family handles this differently and every couple handles this differently. And many, many families are completely fine to have allergens in the home and have color coded pots and pans for different members of the family. Um, and same with couples. And, you know, like we don't have my allergens in the house, um, but I certainly grew up, my parents ate my allergens. So they were in the house. They knew, I mean, I've, I've had food allergies since I was an infant. So they knew my dad ate walnuts all the time. I'm allergic to walnuts. 
Did I have a problem in my house? No. Was everything washed in the dishwasher? Yes. <laughs> so it really, it really, um, I think everyone's very individual. And like we've all been saying, I think it's about clearly understanding your feelings about it and clearly communicating what your needs are, regardless of what the study says. If you're like, I'm good to go after an hour and you eat something else and you brush your teeth and you haven't had a reaction. Okay. <laughs> you know, but if you're like, I want to wait till tomorrow, then, then that, I think that's a fair thing to request. Yeah. And I just want to yeah. mention, because I know that people had asked about toothbrushes. So, um, yeah, you know, I think tooth, brushes, I, I, unless you're sharing toothbrushes with your partner, um, it shouldn't be an issue if uh, like, as far as the toothbrush, like uh, hopefully your partner's rinsing their toothbrush well um, in between uses. Um, and then, uh, and then that should kind of like mitigate any kind of risk factor associated with the toothbrush. Um, and then I just also wanted to mention, because I know people are getting scared about the seminal fluid um, reactions. That's very, very rare. I think there's only been 80 cases reported um, to date. And so it's not something that happens very commonly. So I don't want people to worry about it. And you would know if you were having a reaction to a seminal fluid um, protein. So I, I feel I like there have been to worry about that. I feel like there are more, uh, I've heard stories of more of latex allergy um, of women having issues with latex and men having issues with latex again in heterosexual uh, contexts here, but that could be in any context, but that's, I, that's what I'm hearing more of. Um, I personally haven't had any issue with seminal fluid, uh, when my partners have, you know, let's say they ate something earlier that day or a day before, and you know, it takes the body takes time to process these things. It's not like you eat an allergen and immediately it's in your semen. So it, you know, takes a minute, but, um, I personally haven't, but yeah, I think again, I think the overall uh, umbrella is about communication. If you have a latex issue or if you're having, um, sexual, um, penetrative intercourse and something itches or burns time to stop and go assess and see what's going on because it could be a whole host of things right and that could uh, on the spectrum of stuff so it could be an allergic response it could be it could be other things of an intimate nature that need to be discussed and evaluated with an appropriate healthcare professional okay so we're <laughs> 10 minutes over and i want to respect everyone's time and i feel like we can go on for another hour um, because we haven't even like really dug into more uh you know, interesting details. Um, so I want to, I just want to quickly wrap this up because I do want to respect everyone's lunchtime. And I want to thank everyone for being so open with us right now and for sharing this conversation. And I feel like we have just started and hopefully we can do a follow up and hit on some more things. Cause I know that there's a lot more interesting relationship questions that have been popping up. And I feel like I might have this panel back again and give us your perspectives from that. Um, but just to close out, I would love any quick, like a uh, one sentence from everyone, just about someone who is just starting to get intimate with a partner. What is your, your one advice, one piece of advice that you would give them, be it from Matt's perspective or from Javier's perspective. So let's go same kind of thing. We'll go Sloan, Javier, Matt, uh, Dr. G. <laughs> I think my one piece of advice is to communicate. I mean, I think, I think we've all said it and it's been so wonderful to hear from Javier and Matthew about what it's like to receive that information as well from a, from a male perspective that they want to hear communication. They want to know what your needs are that a partner wants to know. And that it is, as Matthew said, it is not a sacrifice. This is, <laughs> you're, you're weighing food versus human love <laughs> and there's no contest. And, um, and I think this is your, this is your medical condition. And I think communicate it, communicate it and, and, and feel confident in your communication. Um, I would say that as well, for sure. And, you know, there's so many different variables that you're going to probably uh, or filters you would probably filter for who's going to be a great, you know, partner for you, short-term, long-term as an example. I think you need to tear up, you know, the food allergy piece, right? And if you find somebody that's empathetic towards that saying, you know what, let's go towards, you know, a, a food allergy friendly cuisine, you know, you can't eat this type of food, let's go, here's an example, right? Um, when you have somebody like that, that's a keeper. That's someone that you definitely want to just kind of build with. 
uh, because it's it you don't want to be you know it's, it's it's challenging to be on that alone. I've seen a lot of comments, and I can definitely empathize with that as well. And you know, bonus points if that person to like Matthew. Like I'm, I'm team Matthew as well too. When you talk about you know just like my wife, right? Saying hey, you know what? Let me talk to the waiter. Let me talk to the this person, that person, to make sure that there's a good sense of allergies and, and understanding what should be going on in the kitchen as well too. So communicate for sure, as Sloan mentioned, and definitely if you find somebody that's empathetic. That should be a, a definite, a number one attribute that you should look for in a partner, in my humble opinion. Sorry. Um, yeah, I think following on from, from both of those, Sloane and Javier, um, you know, people, most people aren't mind readers. So, you know, you can't go into a first date just thinking, oh, OK, I know exactly what allergies you've got. So I'm going to avoid this and this. You've got to you've got to say it. You've got to be confident enough to just go in and, and say it and and hope that that person understands. Um, and then following on from that, don't be scared. Like your allergies are part of your life. It's not something that controls you, but it's something that you live with and, and you just get by. Um, don't be scared that if you tell someone and they run away, you know, they're not the right person for you, are they? So you will find someone, the next person, the next person, the next person, they will be the right person for you. So yeah, you know, actually it's probably a benefit to say it right at the beginning because they're gonna go away, run off. And, and then you'll find a better person for you. So yeah, don't, just don't be scared about saying, being open. I think for me, it's not only communication, but it's also just being prepared. So I think that with food allergies, I think the main thing is if you treat the reaction as early as possible, then we should be okay. And I think that's the, the key thing in all of this. There's, it's really hard to predict every single situation. Again, there's not enough data to tell us, does it pass into the seminal fluid? Does it pass into vaginal secretions? Does it, you know, what, what is the situation? What is the issue? Was it in the person's mouth? Was it here? Was it there? But at the end of the day, if you're prepared and your partner is prepared, then everybody will be kept safe. And I think that's one of the key things that I want to just, you know, let everyone know that we can't predict every single situation that could happen. Um, we just can't. But I think if everyone's prepared, if everyone's informed, then everyone can stay safe. Thank you. Thank you everyone so much. This has been so illuminating. I also wish I had seen this when I was 15. <laughs> I would have been a lot less afraid of things. Um, and hopefully we can have this conversation or continue this conversation another time soon. I will be emailing the panelists about that because I feel like our audience is also very intrigued. Um, again, thank you so much. We will release this in case anyone wants to listen to it again. It should come out tomorrow. Um, and send questions. You know, we are open to having more panel discussions and we want to answer the questions that you guys are interested in. So please feel free to email us, uh, respond to the email that we'll be sending you tomorrow. And again, thank you so much. Have a wonderful rest of your day, everyone. And I hope your day is full of kisses. <laughs> Thanks, everyone. Bye.